Hi, um, I'm Rodrigo. I want to tell you a story that goes, covers the last 15 years of my life in eight minutes, but I want to make three points. So first, I do recordings of single neurons in humans, and I don't mean neuronal recordings, I mean single neurons. And these recordings are done in epileptic patients. They get implanted in intracranial electrodes to try to cure them from epilepsy. There are a lot of technical details, but about 15 years ago, I started doing these recordings. I go and show pictures to a patient, and then I found out there's a neuron that fires to any picture of Jennifer Aniston and to nothing else. No matter how I show her, the neuron will fire. And that's what people call, maybe you have heard, the Jennifer Aniston neuron. And as I found this one, I found another one firing to Halle Berry, any picture of Halle Berry. I found another one firing to Luke Skywalker, another one firing to the Sydney Opera House, another one firing to Maradona, and so on. Him? Even if we write the name, we try it, Oprah Winfrey, I wrote the name Oprah, the neuron fire. I say the name, I said Oprah, the neuron fire. Mm. Can you speak a little slower? Slower, okay. Yeah. It's an echo. Good. Then, um, <laughs> <laughs> just, just a little Halle, bit. Halle so, Halle Berry. Let's go back to Halle Berry. So, the point was that's quite interesting, and that's the first point. There are neurons in the human brain that fires to concept, because the neuron was firing to Jennifer Aniston, not to a specific picture of her. It was firing to her. The other neuron was firing to Halle Berry, not to how she looked like in one picture or another, not to visual features, sensory features, but to her, to the concept. So there are neurons that fire to concepts in the human brain, and we call them, or I call them, concept cells. That's the first point. The second point is, why? Why do we have neurons firing to concepts in this area? And this area is the hippocampus, and we know that the hippocampus is involved in memory. So why do we have neurons firing to concepts in a memory area? And then we did some experiments. Well, first, I had some speculations, and I said, well, Maybe it's because of the fact that we tend to remember concepts and forget details. Mm. And that's how we tend to remember our experiences. We don't remember all the details. We don't remember how we are dressed or how we look like every day. We remember concepts. We make abstractions, and these are the basis of our memories. So in the last five years or so, we did few experiments to show exactly how these neurons are involved in memory. And the long story short is basically that we show that these neurons can encode associations the basis of memories in just one trial. So if I have a Jennifer Aniston neuron and I pair Jennifer Aniston, say, with the Eiffel Tower, in one trial, the neuron will start firing to the Eiffel Tower without Jennifer Aniston. So the memory of Jennifer Aniston in the Eiffel Tower is encoded by these neurons by forming a new associations, and they can maintain this coding of associations. So that's quite interesting. So now we have neurons firing to concepts, and these neurons are involving memory, memory formation and memory storage. Now comes the third point, and this is quite bold and very, very controversial. But I want to make it because I think it opens quite interesting discussions, or fascinating discussions. Now, the interesting point is that so far, nobody could find these neurons in other animals. People have tried in rats, people have tried in monkeys, and they don't find anything close to that. And this makes me think maybe these neurons are kind of related to something that might be the basis of human intelligence, of human cognitive abilities. And I'm not saying that it's only because of these neurons who are different than chimpanzees. I think this is the pinnacle, this is the end result of a lot of processing that goes on in cortex, but I found it quite interesting that we have an explicit representation of abstractions, of concepts, in a memory area that other species do not have. And the key difference is the following. The key difference is that a rat has neurons in the hippocampus. The hippocampus of the rat looks similar to the hippocampus of humans and monkeys, and the rat has neurons in the hippocampus that they fire to specific things, but always within a context. So the rat may have a neuron firing to this microphone in this pedestal, but if I will put the microphone on the floor, mm -hmm. a different set of neurons will fire. So there is a concept of a microphone. There are neurons firing to the microphone in the brain of the rat. I'm just making it up, no? I'm just put a microphone as an example. But if I change the microphone, the position of the microphone, if I change the context, there will, different set, there will be a different set of neurons firing. In humans, no matter what I do with a microphone, it's always the same neurons firing in the hippocampus. So the key difference is that in rats, and to a big extent in monkeys, we have what we call conjunctive coding. The neurons fire to the microphone in the pedestal, not to the microphone in the floor. Another set of neurons will fire to the microphone in the floor. 
In humans, in contrast, we have a context-independent coding. It's quite invariant. The neurons fire to the microphone, no matter what. The neurons fire to different concepts, no matter what. And what I found fascinating these days is to speculate, and that's my take to the next brain, to speculate what are the consequences of this completely different type of coding in the human brain compared to other species. What are the implications of having representation of abstractions? And what I'm speculating is that this representation of abstractions might be the key for high-level human thoughts, for making analogies, inferences, disparate associations, creativity, and so on. Because this is all based on abstracting concepts and making links between concepts. And if all the concepts, they are based on representations that are context-dependent, as in rats, if this is a microphone, but it's in the pedestal, it's in this white thing and so on, maybe making these links is much harder. So what I'm speculating, and my bold statement, is that this context-independent abstract representation may be linked to human thoughts and intelligence. And if you're interested in reading about that, the first paper proposing this idea is actually coming out tomorrow, so email me and I'm happy to send it to you. Thank you. Cool.